Hola, mis amigos. It's Mike again, and, uh, yeah, um, so last night I watched the president-elect, Joe Biden, make a speech, and then I went on the Breakfast Club channel and spoke for, like, four hours with them on not just politics, but, uh, favorite sci-fi movies and stuff like that, um, we were all smiles, and afterwards I, I realized that the president, the current one, Donald Trump, had tweeted in a while. I was like, oh man, I wonder if he had like an aneurysm. But then uh, I went to sleep, woke up, and saw that he had around three in the morning, you know, which is kind of normal for him, that, that three in the morning constitutional on the toilet that he does. Around three in the morning, he started tweeting again. And we still have two months of that left. Like, it's not over. The election might be over, except for, you know, the the various legal battles. But, uh, yeah. It's not over in that we still have to suffer through two more months of Donald Trump. Regardless, um, I did see a, uh, a press release from George Bush, who was the winner of the uh, 2000 Bush v. Gore Supreme Court lawsuit, um, and he even called Joe Biden to congratulate him, and also called Kamala, Kamala Harris, sorry, Kamala to get that right. He called them both, congratulated them, and then wrote a press release about it. Because back in his day, 20 years ago, uh, Al Gore, for the good of the country, decided to not sully the office by pursuing things beyond a certain point. Like, if it's a, if it's a reasonable lawsuit, you know, you follow it out, but then when you see the... Uh, probably going to lose anyway, and, you know, you want this peaceful transition of power, you just can concede. But, uh, my money would be on Donald Trump never conceding. <laughs> this is going to go on forever. Um, like, I think he's going to start his own, uh, news organization, and just, uh, it'll be kind of like something around the lines of OAN or Breitbart or whatnot. Um, it might be the, the QAnon News Network. But, uh, you know, he'll take a seat right next to Alex Jones in our hearts, you know. Anyways, what I want to talk about today is, <clears throat> with all those uh, lawsuits and whatnot, uh Alongside of those is also a lot of misinformation that's being spread, some of which by the president and being tagged by Twitter line by line with, you know, this is a disputed accusation of voter fraud. This is a disputed accusation of voter fraud. Just like, they have to, you know, they have to put an asterisk by just about everything the guy says. Even Shepard Smith, Smith had to pull out of... Uh, one of Donald Trump's speeches just to tell the the people at home, um, we can't let him lie like this without saying to you guys, uh, he's lying. <laughs> right? Like, that happened. Um, <clears throat> so th there's all these, uh, conspiracy theories being generated by this moment in time. You know, this past week. And uh, a good bunch of them were posted in a comment on my uh, last YouTube ramble uh, by a, an account named Gran Darf. Um, somebody who has no videos, but did a, a pretty long post. I, I, I hope that it was cut and paste and put on other people's channels. 
and it's it's spam for everyone because it was a long post, you know. And if if it was for me, I found it very unconvincing, and that was a lot of work on his part. Um, but <sighs> long story short, uh, too long didn't listen. Please fact check what you spew at me before spewing. That's it. That's that's what I'll say. I'm gonna go down Grand Darf's. Uh, whole uh, comment. He's the lucky one that gets my attention today. And uh, we're going to see how I feel about it line by line. Grandarf writes, What about the mysterious, overwhelming Biden votes late mail-in ballots mysteriously found in key states? They weren't mysteriously found, Mr. Darf. Uh, they were counted after the in-person votes. And this was known that it was going to happen this way months in advance, which was why a whole bunch of uh, places were predicting this red mirage. You can go ahead and Google the term red mirage and look back for months and see that you know outlets had been saying that the votes might go this way. Why? Well, because Biden supporters are afraid of the Rona, and Trump kept telling his own people to vote in person. So the Biden supporters just did mail-in ballots. Um, let's see. He also wants to know, what about the lack of security, people going in and out without so much as a temperature check? It's with people stopping in the middle of the night in vans and dropping off unidentified boxes, etc. People going in and out with travel suitcases, etc. Well, some of that was actually in, uh, in the moment debunked by people standing right there, like also with their cell phone cameras saying, uh, look, this guy's trying to make a huge big deal about these uh, suitcases going into this van. And the guy walks around uh, and says, hey, can I see what you guys have in those? And, and they showed him. It was like GoPros and camera equipment and stuff like that. And, you know, this is something I just saw on TikTok while I was trying to relax. You know, people are, are debunking these things in the moment because uh, some people are just really given to seeing conspiracies where there are none to be had. As far as the no one uh, having a temperature check when they go in, I'm surprised you care because you're obviously a Trump supporter. But, um, yeah, I think... Uh, Maybe routinely they should have temperature checks. Uh, everybody get checked every like three hours, maybe. That would be a good idea. You know, I'm I'm on your side there. Uh, people should have temperature checks if they're going in and out. There should be like one person just stationed at, at every polling place, like checking people's temperature. Okay. Uh, let's see. He wants to know, what about the lack of transparency? People boarding up windows so people can't see the counting process. Um, so there were uh, registered poll watchers, and then there were everyone that showed up, right? If those people that showed up and were looking in through windows on the outside were yelling threats at those people like happened to some poll polling place workers, uh, where people were identified by the people in the crowd. Like, hey, I know him. He's, you know, isn't your name Ralph? Um, hey. Anyways, if it was... Uh, 
a threat to the people working, then, you know, they, they put up uh, barriers, but the people inside that were registered poll watchers were still able to look. Next he says, Mysteriously trashed slash found ballots. I did hear some stories about, uh, you know, not an enormous amount of them, but a tiny amount of those happen. Little stories that you can find in the news here and there. Um, late ballots being labeled with yesterday's stamps by the post office. Uh, I actually believe that's probably uh, a thing. Imagine there's a post office and it only has like three date stamps for this sort of thing, you know, to officially damp, stamp these things. Um, look at the amount of ballots that came into each of those post offices and then think, like, how much stamping would it take one person to stamp all those ballots? Maybe into the next day and the day after, even though the ballots had arrived by the correct day, they might have to take more than a day just to stamp all those. Just think about the logistics of it. Give yourself one second for a good stamp. Count the number of ballots that came in on that day. Do the math. Okay, how many people would you have to have stamping to get it all done in one day? If they put those ballots aside into a special room and they decided, okay, we're going to stamp all these November 3rd because they all came by November 3rd and it takes them till November 5th to do it, I'm okay with that. <sighs> Logistics. Um, let's see. Easily abusable mail-in ballots with dead people voting or people voting in multiple states. Uh, Lindsey Graham on Fox News said that uh, there was like 94 dead people that they found or something that were voting in Pennsylvania. It's not a number that's going to change the uh, election, but uh, I'm all for investigating those 94 dead people. Um, let's see. Vote counters dressed with partisan gear like BLM gear, not very impartial and does not inspire confidence. Uh, when I was a polling place coordinator, I would not have allowed that. Um, I was trained, just like every other polling place worker in Colorado, that you're not supposed to wear gear like that. But on the night that I was running a polling place, uh, most of the Democrats were wearing blue or denim. And the Republicans were wearing red sweaters, and one was wearing an Alabama sweater. So, uh, you know, they still want to be known by their color, but, you know, you can't do anything about that. But if I had seen, like, BLM on something, I might have said, hey, maybe uh, turn your shirt inside out or get a different shirt, or you can't work here. Uh, let's see. Abnormally long counting times in key states just as if these Dem-controlled states needed more time for their fraudulent shenanigans, etc. Here's the thing about that. Whichever states were the last states to get their votes counted, the slowest ones, were going to become the key states. Right? It's just the thing where, like, if you have a close race and you have a state that's taking a long time to get their ballots counted, you have like four or five of those states, those are the last states to get counted that would put somebody over the edge. There were other key states, key, like Wisconsin and Michigan, and, you know, they flipped, they got their counting done, you know, in uh, a lot quicker than Pennsylvania and Nevada. And I don't even know what the fuck is happening with Alaska. Anyways, whichever state takes the longest to count their votes in a close election becomes the key state. Uh, so just think about that logic. Um, then he wants to know, what about election officials and USPS refusing to obey court orders? Etc., etc., etc. Give me links to the specific things that they're refusing to do. I, I haven't heard anything like that. Anyways, everybody else, if you're going to leave a comment, please uh, maybe Google what you are asserting before uh, commenting it. 